So in this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and add a VFX to a character bone, and then be able to actually take it off by hitting another one of these VFX power-ups, or we can also go ahead and go through this volume, and if need be, we can actually remove it too if the character dies. So if you like this video, please go ahead and support us over at our Clever Like School. We've got a whole lot more like this, and it will help you actually become a better UEFN developer. I'll leave the link down below in the description. All right, so to begin this, let's go ahead and just jump into the content drawer down here at the bottom and go into our devices. Instead of here, we're just gonna go ahead and do a search for a VFX power-up. I'm just gonna grab one of these devices, go ahead and drag it in here. I do wanna name this so that it is something very specific, and this one I'm gonna call Attach. Next, I wanna come down here and make sure that my visual effect is actually set up not to glow, but to something that's actually custom because we're gonna go ahead and create our very own on this one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the socket effect right here instead of being base. I wanna make sure that this is actually set to the head. All right, let's go ahead and create that visual effect. And we can do this a couple ways, but I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this none right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new Niagara system and I'm gonna go ahead and save it in my folder right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and use an empty system. Now we need to go ahead and open that one up. So I'm gonna just double click right here. And inside of here, we're not gonna need to worry about this node, so you can pretty much just ignore it, but I do need to create a new actual emitter. And we can do this a couple ways. I'm just gonna tap the E key as an echo to go ahead and create a new one. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm under either templates or parent emitters if our templates isn't actually loading anything in. And go ahead and choose this empty one right here. Now let's go ahead and set up our emitter. So the first thing, let's go into our properties right here. And at the very top, we're gonna to go ahead and toggle on local space because we want this to be attached to the player and its local space. Next, if your calculate bounds is actually set to dynamic, perfect, go ahead and just leave it as is. Then let's go down into our emitter state. And right now it's actually set up as the system, which we don't want because we don't wanna use the system in this case. So over here in our lifecycle mode, we'll go ahead and set this from system to self. And then just below in the inactive response, we wanna go ahead and change this. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the second one, which is kill, emitter and particles die immediately. That way when the emitter dies, so do the particles. Our next move is to go ahead and change our loop behavior because we don't want it to spawn over and over and over again. We wanna go ahead and just spawn it once. Now the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and add in how we want these particles to be spawned. In this case, we're just spawning one single particle, so we're gonna go ahead and add in a spawn burst instantaneous. So click on the little plus that you see right here and type in the word burst and go ahead and choose this spawn burst instantaneous. Next, let's go ahead and work with this initialized particle module. And inside of here, we're gonna go ahead and work with the lifetime because we want the lifetime of the particle to last as long as the emitter. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and click on this little tiny arrow down right here, this little carrot, and we're gonna type in the word emitter. And what we're looking for is this specific one that says emitter current loop duration. Now we're gonna go ahead and work within this particle update. So go ahead and click on this little plus right here and then type in the word static. And what we're looking for is this static mesh location. Now what this is going to do is it's gonna say, hey, we want this to show up at a very specific location on the body. Now we've already said that we want it to show up on the head, but specifically we want it to show up on a socket that is in that location. So to get to that, go ahead and close down this static mesh that you see up at the top just to make things a little bit easier and come down here right underneath sampling. And for those of you that are taking notes, this is the important part where it says mesh sampling type. Click on the little drop down and change this to sockets. Now let's pause for just a second and point out this other section just below. This area will allow you to actually offset where your object is going to be in relation to the socket. Now there are two ways to deal with this, one here inside of Niagara, or two, actually change the pivot on the object using the modeling tools inside of the engine. Now the last place that we need to worry about down here is a sprite renderer. Now if you don't have one, that's fine, just delete it because we don't want it. And what we're gonna do instead is go ahead and add in a mesh renderer by clicking this little plus button. So we're gonna just click on that, go and just choose the mesh renderer. Now inside of here is where we're actually going to add in that specific mesh that we wanna use. In my case, it's that little duck. So I'm gonna come up here underneath meshes and make sure that this part is actually open. And then go ahead and click on this little drop down and go ahead and find said duck. Then go ahead and just choose it. So now you can go ahead and just save your Niagara system because it's done and ready to go. The last thing that we wanna do is take a look at the duck because there's something very important that we need to talk about in regards to how it is set up before we can get it to work correctly in the actual game. All right, so here inside of the level editor, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that my duck is selected and then go ahead and double click on the static mesh to open it up down here. 
And the thing that I want to point out is the direction that this duck is actually facing. And in this case, you can see that it is actually headed down the X direction. This is the forward direction in both UEFN as well as in the Unreal Engine. The other thing that I want to point out is its actual size. So I did drag it here into the world to get an idea of how big I want it to be. So to make sure that it is the correct rotation as well as the correct size, we can go ahead and use the modeling tools here inside of UEFN or the Unreal Engine. Now we do have a tutorial that covers this process, so I'm gonna do it really quickly here. One, I wanna make sure that this little gizmo has this specific icon set up in it. This is super important because I wanna see what its local rotation is. And you can see that its local rotation currently is facing me, even though that is the opposite of what the world is. And what I wanna do is make sure that the object X direction, his beak, is actually faced down to the X direction in the world. So by having this little gizmo set up as a local, I can then go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. And when I go back to my move gizmo, you can see that it is facing the correct direction. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and make sure that the scale is set up correctly. So using my scale tool, I can make this whatever size I want. I'm just going to set it back to what it was. And I'm going to hit shift four on the keyboard. That's going to open up the modeling tools. And the modeling tools we're looking for specifically live here inside of this X form area. Go ahead and just click there. And the button we want is this one right here, this bake transform. So then go ahead and click on this. So now I want to make sure that my bake rotation is toggled on. And then my bake scale is set up to a bake full scale. Then all I have to do is click on the accept button and it'll be set up the right direction as well as the correct scale. Now I've already got this done. So I, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and hit the cancel button. All right, with all of that set up, let's go ahead and finish setting up our VFX power up device. So with this one selected, we do want to make sure that this top little checkbox up here that says infinite effect duration is toggled on because we just want it on until we tell it to actually be turned off. And for testing purposes, let's go ahead and make sure this time to respawn is actually set really, really low. That way we can continue to test this without having to wait for it to respawn. The next thing that we wanna do is go ahead and make a duplicate of this. We're gonna set it up to be the detach. So with this one selected, I'm just gonna hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and click and drag and create a duplicate and go ahead and rename this one from attach to detach. Now let's go ahead and talk about a few more of the settings here inside of the details panel. So if we scroll down a little bit and I open this up just a tiny bit, we see this custom effect exclusivity index. So what this means is that we're going to attach this thing on index zero, and then we're going to attach something else on zero and it's going to replace it. And you can kind of see that if you hover over this and actually read the description. So that's super important. Now, the other thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to change its custom color just so I can tell which one it is. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure this direct color, and I'm going to change this to something like red, like so. Now, the other thing that we want to do is this checkbox right here. This says disable effect on pickup. So I'm going to click that. Now, what that means is that it's going to go ahead and just take this thing off. And we can do that by either walking over it, but let's go ahead and demonstrate it using a volume. So let's go and open up our devices. And what I'm going to search for is just volume and go ahead and grab this volume device right here. And I'm just going to set it kind of here in the background. And again, for testing purposes, let's make sure this visible in game is actually toggled on so that we can see it actually in the game. And next, what I want to do is make sure that I have my device actually selected and down here at the very bottom where it says a pickup, we're going to go ahead and just add in an array element, go ahead and make sure that we're using this specific volume. And then for its setting, we're going to go ahead and set this on enter. Make sure that we save everything and we should now be able to go ahead and push the changes, start the game and test everything to make sure that it's actually working correctly. All right, so if we go ahead and walk through this, we should get a power up. Hey, there it is, a nifty little thing on our head. Now, if we walk through this, it should take it off. Perfect, now let's go ahead and test it on the volume as well. Like so, cool, that's gone. And just to be sure, let's go ahead and jump into this thing which will eliminate us. So perfect. There you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and create a particle system that you can be used to go ahead and attach to a bone, to a character, and give them some kind of interesting thing that attaches to them, whatever that happens to be. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go ahead and just leave a comment down below. We'll get back to you when we can. And don't forget to be clever, like, and subscribe.